What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. It's time for us to do a little bit more survivalificating in the green hell. In the previous episode, we'd done a pretty good job of getting started. We had done all right. And so now we're looking for more resources. Our traps are more than likely not set off over here. I'd be very, very surprised if they were. Oh my god, they are. What's going on right now? Why are my traps getting disarmed? Maybe it's because of the birds. Maybe the birds are bugging them out. I don't know. I've never seen this happen with traps before where they just get sprung and there's nothing inside of them. It might be a mechanic that I'm unaware of, but I put a lot of hours into this game now and I've never seen it. So that would be something I would have to adjust for. Oh, there's a rattlesnake over there. Well, that'll make a mighty fine breakfast. Yeah, let's have ourselves some snake. Got him. What's going on, Snakey? For those of you that don't know, Snake is definitely edible. Make sure you chop the head off, though, because the injectors, the little thingies in their teeth, are still more than capable of injecting you with venom after they die. In fact, a snake's head can keep biting for a minute after you behead them. I've, uh, I've snaked a couple snakes before with a shovel, and they keep on snapping after you get them. I don't like rattlesnakes. They're dangerous to the family. you got to get rid of them. I grew up in a place where there's lots of rattlesnakes. I don't enjoy killing nature. It's not something that I take pleasure in, but if you live in the country and you're in a place and you've got kids or you've got a little sister or a little brother or you've got other kids in the neighborhood and stuff like that, well, you got to take care of the snake. It is what it is. It's grim business, but it needs to be done. Some people are against killing entirely. I can respect that. I can respect that. I understand. But I am not one of those people when it comes to animals. My neighbor got bit by a rattlesnake, actually. I don't know if I've told this story on the channel, but my neighbor went down to her mailbox and there was a baby rattlesnake in the bushes right next like so there was kind of like a there was kind of brush underneath our mailbox and it's kind of one of those things that you just don't pay attention to when you live like in a country area it's just like you know some grass grew around the mailbox that was like probably not very tall like probably about 8 or 9 inches tall but it was enough for a baby rattlesnake to be in there and baby rattlesnakes they're kind of panicky they tend to bite when they shouldn't and so she went down to the mailbox they also inject more venom than they should when they bite you and so anyways, they go all or nothing. They kind of freak out a little bit. So anyways, she went down to the mailbox, grabbed her mail, and the snake bit her in the leg. And by the time she got back to her house, her joints were already stiffening up, and she was already having trouble talking. And it was pretty bad. She had to go to the hospital, and the anti-venom was like ten grand. It, it's expensive to get. Don't get bit by snakes, guys. Avoid it. If you live in a place with venomous snakes like cottonmouths and diamondbacks and all that kind of stuff, be careful. Them things will get you. Water moccasins and all that kind of stuff, man. There we go. That'll get our proteins back up a little bit. I'm just trying to keep us kind of regenerating health for right now. You don't regenerate health very well if you're unhealthy and you don't have the nutrients you need in order to get by. In fact, that snake was kind of fortuitous. I wasn't looking to kill a snake right now, but snakes are a fantastic meal in this game. So if you see them around, don't hesitate to kill them. Let's go out and like survey the kingdom, shall we? I vaguely know where we are on the map. I think over that hill right there, there should be like a river. And if we follow the river, it'll take us to interesting places. I think. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I might be in the right place that I think I am. It's never a bad time to pick up a couple of sticks either. Like, I try to have a full inventory on sticks whenever I can. Just because you never know when you're going to have to make a campfire like right now. You never know when you're going to try and have to make your fire a little bit bigger. Or like save a flame or something like that. What we're looking for right now is coconut or anything else that might be helpful. I have my doubts that our traps are in an advantageous... Uh oh. Hey, little buddy. How would you like to be my dinner? I think I'd like to eat you. Got him. All right. See, and this is why I try to make a spear as early on as I possibly can. It'll make your life a lot more simple. And now we're actually fresh on the road to subsistence in all fairness. Now that we can hunt, we're not in bad shape. And we got a bunch of bones off that guy. What you saw right there where the camera jerks upwards, that's a bug. After you harvest an animal or after you build stuff, I've noticed it. My camera, when it recenters, will jerk upwards towards the sky for some reason. Oh, we got some natives around. Probably not in our best interest to spark beef with the natives right now. Where you at? Oh, another snake. Well, snakey poo, you gotta go. You are a dangerous landmine that I don't feel like stepping on. Snakes are dangerous. I would kill them wherever you see them in this game because they'll stay cleared for a while. Plus, we get more rattlesnake meat. See the camera right there? You see it do it? It did it. It done did it. 
Looks like he's just hanging out. I don't think he's doing a whole lot, so we'll leave him alone. Like, the natives, so if you get into a fight with the natives, you can get some pretty cool gear way earlier than you normally would. Uh, like obsidian stick knives, you can get bows, you can get arrows off of them, you can eat them if you want to. I mean, it depends if you want to be a cannibal or not, you'll lose some sanity. But if you're hungry enough, the uh, human being will make a meal for you. You can eat them if you have to. I actually think we're going to have to start worrying about our carbs pretty soon. I think we're good on proteins and fats for right now. But carbs are definitely going to be a problem. We got another leech. All right. Well, I'll deal with the leech in a minute, actually. Birds, y'all need to shut the hell up. Yeah, I didn't think I was going to get lucky right there. What am I doing on water? We okay? Yeah, go ahead and drink a little bit of water right there. Get us filled up. I don't like the way the watch beeps every single time you open it. I'm hoping they remove that as a feature because I tend to check my stats a lot and you always get that beep beep. Like, it's super annoying. Like, I don't know. It started to get to me. I streamed the game yesterday for like five, six hours. And like, I check my stats so frequently that like, the beep beep, it happens a little bit more frequently than I'd like to admit. Let's go ahead and cook up this capybara meat so that it holds for a little while longer. The capybara meat's going to take a while before it's clean. So let's just wait it on out. And once we've got a food supply for later... Oh yeah, I needed to get rid of that leech. Let's get rid of the leech real quick. Where's he at? Probably on my leg. And it tends to be where they're at. Uh, you can't heal. Your HP will constantly go down while you have a leech on you. So, it's kind of a drain on your resources that I wouldn't recommend. Keep this stuff cooking and I'll see you when we get done. So, the first round of capybara bacon is all done. That'll last us for two days, actually. It's a pretty good road meal if you cook it. Like, and you get a ton of energy back from it. Like, watch this. Look how much energy you get back from that and how much you heal. Pretty solid, fantastic meal, if I'm honest. And now we're maxed out on proteins and fats. Capybara bacon. There ain't nothing like it. I don't think a giant guinea pig would taste very good, but I've never had a giant guinea pig, so I guess I would reserve my judgment until I have actually tasted the fruit of the capybara. Up until then, I guess I would reserve my judgment. It was raining while I was out here, and so it's possible all of our bowls are refilled as well. We can use a little bit of hydration. We need carbs more than anything else, unfortunately. There ain't a whole lot of carbs around. I, Dude, I heard it raining. I know it was raining out here. You can't lie to me. The capybara meat isn't going to be done for a minute. And frankly, if we burn it, it's okay. I can get more of it. It's not really that difficult of a task to get all the capybara meat you need. The jungle, like, I think this game is really all about hunting, in all fairness. Like, once you get the ability to hunt, the game is not actually that difficult. And that's the point at which I would recommend. Once you've picked up, like, how to hunt capybaras. Ooh, we got some marinara plants over here. That's what I call them. They're called molinaria, but I call them marineras. Just because it makes me happy, because it reminds me of pasta. I like pasta. Pasta's delicious. Let's make bone knives instead of wasting our obsidian. How about that? I think for a bone knife, you need, like, three bones, maybe? Or is it two bones and a stick? I don't recall. Is it a bone and a stone? No. I don't remember how to make a bone knife. I thought it was like three bones or something, but I guess I'm wrong. I thought for sure it was three bones. Hmm. Maybe it's a rope. If you ever aren't sure what the missing ingredient is, add a rope. That seems to be the rule of experimentation in this game. If you're not sure what the ingredients are, add a rope. There we go. And everything follows the same template, except for what goes in for the head. So if you're trying to make a spear, it's the same recipe with stone, obsidian, bone, whatever you're trying to do. It'll be better if you take a knife to make the spear, but it should. You can make, like, rudimentary and, like, refined versions of pretty much every weapon. We got ourselves a coconut over here. I like coconuts. Coconuts are good. We got a couple coconuts, actually. That should help us get our carbs back up, I think. Perfect. I don't think my blade skill I don't think my blade skill is good enough right now to really do what I want to do. But I'm kind of playing it by ear for the moment. We got a little bit of coconut flesh right there. Probably eat that up real fast. Yeah, let's go get it. Let's go get it. We got five carbs from each of those. That's not very much, but it should be enough to keep us running for a little Oh my god, it's like coconut heaven up in here. I don't know exactly what would be in coconut heaven. I don't know what coconuts enjoy. I've never found a coconut that I've connected with enough on a personal level to where I could ask them about their personal preferences, you know? Like, maybe someday I might be able to accomplish that, but for right now, not so much. Just throw out all those bowls. I don't need them. 
Stack a bunch of bowls on the hill on this side. Yup, that's what Splatty does. He stacks up bowls. It's a crazy world that Splatty lives in. If you ain't ready to stack some bowls, you can't kick it with Splatty. And we got a little bit of drinkable stuff right there. I'm just trying to brute force my carbohydrates back up. We only get five for each one of these, but it's kind of necessary. Trying to keep the stats in a suitable place. There we go. I could actually throw the coconuts down the hole right here. And then we'd have a little coconut stash inside of our base. Yeah, let's not fall down the hole if we can help it. But I will throw coconuts down there. Seems easy enough. There was another one back here somewhere too. Oh, another dead parrot. Nice. I don't really need the... Uh, ooh, there's a dead thing. So if you need maggots or you need bones, you can get them from over here. Oh, two dead guys. Mm. I'll take that. Sounds alright to me. I don't really need it, but I'll take it. That right there is an unknown plant. I don't know exactly what it does. I know that you can make tinder out of it, but that's about the only thing that I've learned about it so far. That is now the coconut poop shoot. That's exactly what we're using that for. This is going to be the way that we restock our base. Hell yeah. Honestly, I could chop down all those bushes down there. And then I could put the coconut bowls right there so that we catch water in that spot too. And it's a little bit closer. It's a valid option. It's actually not a terrible idea. Streamlining your efficiency is a really good idea when you're surviving. Because everything has to be done in a cost analysis kind of way. So like everything has to be looked at in a survival situation. In such a way where you're like, how many calories have I burned in order to gain how many calories now survival in video games is a lot easier than it is in real life in real life animals aren't just gonna let you spear them in real life you know it's not gonna rain as much as it does right here in real life you got to deal with a lot of other messed up parts of the situation but the same principle holds true in a video game as it does in real life you should constantly be appraising like what's a good idea versus what is a bad idea for your energy usage I probably will chop down all these plants in here I just, I see no reason to leave it all up. I mean, if I clear it out, we'll have a nice little bed over here. Of kindling, too. Because that'll dry out and go rotten after a while. Perfect. Cool. We've done a little bit of gardening. Gardening and landscaping. Splatty a specialist. You know how to do all that kind of stuff. How's my meat doing on this set? Is it all good to go? Hey, we got some more capybara bacon. Sounds good. And instead of the capybara bacon, let's go ahead and harvest off a few more birds. We're going to need the feathers for arrows later on. It might actually be a good idea to make all the arrows right now so that we're not wasting a bunch of inventory space on that. We've got macaw meat. Go ahead and cook that up too. It looks like our rattlesnake meat has gone bad. Oh no, our old macaw meat went bad. That's okay. So apparently one of the macaws was rotten. That's alright. I can live with that. Uh, the rattlesnake meat should cook up a little bit faster than everything else. While we wait, we will go ahead. I would like a button, by the way, developers, that repeats the last thing that you crafted. I would love that if you would make a repeat last craft button. That would be great so that you could just mash out the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, stuff like arrows, much easier to deal with if there was a, if there was a craft again button. Perfect. Got a couple of arrows right there. I'm actually only doing this because I don't want to fill up my inventory space with feathers. I'd much rather just have a pile of arrows in there ready to go for when we inevitably end up with a bow. Because the bow, I don't know. I can't hit anything with the bow. I seem to be much better with a spear than I am with a bow. But everybody got skills and everybody got talents, I guess. The bow never seems to work quite the way I planned for me. I try real hard, but it never, it never performs. Uh, rattlesnake meat is the last thing we need to throw on the fire. Capybara meat is good for two days. So is the macaw meat. I think we're going to be eating pretty good for the next couple days. Ain't going to be no problems. And because it's fatty meat, we don't have to worry about rabbit fevers. So that's good too. That's a good thing as well. Rabbit fever is one of those like unlikely things that's probably not going to happen to you. But it never hurts to like plan for it and try to make sure that it doesn't happen to you. You know what I mean? Like it's it's best to work around it. So if you can find meat that's got nice fatty kind of corpuscles and gristle on it, it'll make your life easier. I think I could put some of these feathers up here. Hmm, I can't fit the last arrow. Okay, well we'll get rid of the bones then. The bones aren't that important. Like we just make a little bone pile over here. Like bones, eh, I can always get more of them. I mean, that's the benefit of hunting. I think I'm going to have to rearrange a little bit. Those Molinarias are like in the perfectly terrible spot to make my inventory management the worst. 
There we go. Much better. Now I should be able to grab that arrow. Kind of stack it up beside the rest of the arrows. I'm actually going to... Oop, that's done. Hold on, I don't want to burn. Wasting food is a bad plan. Don't waste food. Being wasteful of food can be an issue. Let's go ahead and convert these into bandages right now anyways, because this is going to make us have much more inventory space. I think they stack up to like six or seven. And so like going in and making these when you need them, probably a good plan. And then we can take that with the tobacco right there. And we'll make one tobacco dressing just in case I step on a snake. It's been known to happen. Snakes are around and they will get you into trouble. So the tobacco dressing will take care of that. Nice and lickety split on the spot. You can also make like an ointment of tobacco that you like eat that I think helps out with the poison situation. What time is it right now? 4.50. We don't really have time for adventuring. Like I'd like to go out and get some more stuff done, but I just don't see it happening right now. Carbs are kind of a concern. Bit of a bummer that we haven't found more carbohydrate supplies, but kind of seems to be the way life goes every now and again. Carbs are kind of hard to come by in the jungle. You can get them from, like, mushrooms and stuff like that. Honestly, I should probably eat this mushroom and just find out what happens. Well, I appear to be okay. I guess the little red ones are alright. I guess those ones don't have a... Oh, the fruit regrew. Nice, cool. I thought the fruit regrow rate was a lot slower than that, but I guess I was wrong. Well, now our carbs are almost completely taken care of. We don't even need to worry about that anymore. Good place to be. A few more sticks around here, too. I need little sticks. Okay. We'll go ahead and harvest some of the bigger sticks then for some of the little stuff. And then I think it's probably about time to set out away from home. Like, tomorrow morning we'll probably go look around and see what we can find. Seems like a good day for adventure. I'm feeling the call of wanderlust in my heart. Another dead parrot. I don't think I need it. Like, you know, I said don't waste food. But frankly, I don't think it's very important right now. Like, we're in a good position, so we've got like a snake landing over here. This one little snake sitting on top of his monolithic throne. Yeah, we'll go adventure in the morning. I want to keep my energy levels up. Alright, so my overall health is pretty good right now, and we've got a backup energy supply in the form of capybara meat. So it's time for us to do some exploration. Let's have a look around the forest. For those of you wondering why I ended up just kind of re-rolling this series and like starting over. We got into a death spiral, so I recorded like seven episodes, but it was like seven episodes of me banging my head against the wall and slowly dying and not knowing what I was doing, and I feel like it made for compelling gameplay. Like sometimes you can do that with a game and it makes it more entertaining. In this case, I felt like it was to the detriment of the episodes, and so I just decided to scrap the whole thing and start over. Felt like a better plan to me. I hope you're on board with We picked up a leech already. Good lord, man. I'm like a leech magnet out here. Leeches love me. I must have delicious blood or something. I must have delicious blood or something. Let's head out. I don't know where I want to go. We'll just follow this rock wall right here until we hit something interesting. How about that? There's a fairly decent chance we won't be back to our home base anytime soon. But the nice thing about this game is if you keep your eyes open and you have a spear... You should be able to just, like, graze off the land as you play the game. Like, it should be completely and totally attainable to just kind of stay on the road and be alright. Go ahead and drink that real fast, because I have a sneaking suspicion we're probably a little bit low. No, I don't want the capybara meat. That's a waste. My guess is that we're probably a little bit low on carbs right now. Yeah, a little bit. We, we could take the edge off. We could take the edge off. We could use some extra cars, because we do have a walk in front of us for right now. Thought that was a rattlesnake for a second. Had kind of a rattly feeling to it. So if you head off down this way, so at this river right here, if you look, there's some like, I don't know what those trees are called right there, but they're the ones with the exposed roots that kind of stand up above the ground. That'll take you to easy mode camp. And I'm going to show you easy mode camp today because if you're struggling with the game, this is hands down one of the better places you can go on the map to learn to play the game at your own pace. It comes with a number of things that basically make the survival aspects of the game non-essential like there's a water purifier there's a fish trap there's a bed there's shelter there's a perfect place to build a fire it's just that's why I call it easy mode camp though if you're looking for a challenge don't use this camp over here but if you're looking to make the game you know a little bit easier so that you can learn the ropes while you're playing then that's what I think it's best used for that's what I used it for uh, when I was struggling and I was dying every single time I started up the game 
because I don't really look at guides. That's not the way that I play games. I don't enjoy looking at guides. I don't find it to be fun. I usually like to mash through it myself through trial and error and frustration and, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's what I find to make better gameplay. But Easy Mode Camp is a very, very nice crutch over here if you need it. All right? So welcome to Easy Mode Camp. Easy Mode Camp is basically going to give you everything you need in order to get started in this game. It's got a fish trap. The fish trap will catch one to two fish a day. Every single day. If you build another one, you will never have food problems ever again when it comes to proteins and fats. Uh, so there's almost always fish over caught over here. Be careful in the water. The only thing dangerous about this location is that there's piranhas in the water. And so if you go into the water and you already have a wound on you or your health is low, the piranhas will attack you. However, you can use that to your advantage if you want in order to get yourself, you know, a whole bunch more fish. Just depends how many bandages you're willing to burn in order to do it. This is a water purifier right here. You pour water into the top, you put a container at the bottom, and it'll purify the water for you without having to boil it. A uh, pretty cool resource. It's designed in like a weird way right now, where the only thing you could put underneath it is a coconut bowl. You can pour a canteen into the top of it, but you can't put a canteen at the bottom of it. I'm hoping they change that, but maybe that's a balance mechanism. I don't really know. Inside this camp, there's going to be a bunch of free food, just in case you've noticed it here. There's a can of food right there. That's always there. There's a mattress. There's a hammock in case you need to sleep. You'll get the comfort bonus. There's an orange juice and a snacky right here. There's some chips and some orange juice. There's also, if you go over this way, there's a free fishing spear sitting up on the dock. And so if you wanted to start fishing and doing all that kind of stuff, there you go. This place is an easy leg up on a whole bunch of recipes that you'll get just for, like, being out here. So try to keep that in mind. There's also some charcoal over here if you wanted to make your own filter. The way that this is constructed right here is they've taken bamboo and you take alternating layers. So you got bamboo and then you would cut a charcoal filter at the bottom so that it holds everything in. And then you would mash it in with a hammer. And then from there, you would make alternating layers of sand and crushed charcoal, sand, crushed charcoal, sand, crushed charcoal. And then when you pour water into the top of it, about four to five layers of sand and crushed charcoal repeating should be about enough to purify just about any water of any type of floating thing. I would still recommend you, I would actually still recommend you boil the water, but that'll get particulate matter out of the water and it'll remove the flavor. So it'll get rid of kind of the weird, gamey, nasty flavor that wild water can have sometimes. Just a little tip. But that's essentially what this object is right here. I've made one before. It works all right. You still got to boil the water. It doesn't get rid of pathogens, but it does get rid of particulate. And particulate can irritate your stomach just as much as pathogens can. So, you know, not a terrible idea. A little coconut action over here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to harvest this guy right here, and we're just going to eat him. Yep, delicioso. And then inside this menu, we got a whole bunch of bowls. Ain't no real reason to keep all the bowls that I can think of. Let's continue on down the beach. Over on this side, there's going to be a native camp across the water. I'm going to risk being mangled by piranhas by just crossing right here because I'm lazy. And laziness has gotten me into trouble in this river before, but it looks like this time we're all right. I don't know if the piranhas only attack if you have an open wound. In real life, that's the only time piranhas are really a problem is if you're openly bleeding or if you've got like a scab or something and you get into the water. I don't think piranhas will attack you... <gasps> In that case, across the river, there's also a really important resource that you're probably going to be looking for later on in the game. Bamboo. Uh, bamboo can be kind of hard to find, but it's across the river from Easy Mode Camp, just in case you were wondering where that's at. I will take these fruits with me. And then right up in here, I think there's a native camp somewhere that I wanted to show you before we ended off the episode so that, like, you can get a whole bunch of recipes. Like, basically the way that recipes happen in this game is you have to see them before you can build them. And so, yeah, there it is right here. And so there's a little A-frame right here that you can build for yourself. Boom, a bamboo shelter. Pretty cool stuff. There's also bamboo logs, some free bamboo sticks. There's a campfire right here. I don't know if this will give me the recipe or if this recipe is linked to your fire starting skill. There's also a bamboo smoker, just in case you wanted to learn to do that. And then I think inside this camp, there's a bow somewhere. Yeah, there is. There it is right there. And so there's a bow. You can either build a bow or you can steal it from the natives. It's up to you with how you want to handle it. It's your call. 
Now that I know how to make a four prong right there, I'm going to go ahead and take the bow so that we learn how to craft that. And we are out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Green Hell. I will see you all later. Hope you guys are having fun with the game. If you wanted to get it for yourself, you can get it down below. Take care. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. It helps out more than you know. And hi do, everybody.